Good morning, dolls, and welcome to Little Gretchen's Workshop. So today I'm doing some more picture frames. Now, this frame I'm showing here was created using liquid polymer clay, which is liquid Sculpey. So I will leave a link in the description so you can see the full process of how I created these frames. Now, dolls, I don't want you to be alarmed. These are old family pictures. Many we have more than one copy of, so I don't want anybody to be concerned that I'm destroying precious images of my family's history. <laughs> now, dolls, the next set of frames, I'm going to use some remnant scraps from a previous build. They're just the birch wood coffee stir sticks, and I'm going to show you this mitering hack. Now, I'm going to mark it right next to the other piece of wood that I'm trying to match it up to, and you see where I made the dot? And so I'm going to draw a line from the dot that I marked up into the corner of the piece of wood. Now you see I'm marking it there, not measuring, just marking it where I made my dot. And then I'm going to cut the miter from the dot over into the corner of the piece of wood. Now dolls, this is simply a mitering hack. It's quite effective. It's worked really well for me. So I just wanted to share it with you today. And I just want you to pay close attention and watch me again. I lay the two pieces that I'm trying to fit together. I mark the wood next to the edge of where I want the second piece of wood to meet. And then I cut from that little dot up into the corner to create the miter. And it fits perfectly dialed. So I just wanted to share that with you. Now I went on to make the other sides to the frame. And I actually had enough of this green painted sticks to make two frames. Now after I had all my mitered pieces cut, and lined up. I laid them on a piece of clear acetate to glue them together because I didn't want them to stick. And the funny part is when I got done, they were exactly the same size. So I have a set of frames made strictly from scraps. So I had this small piece of scrapbook paper that I always liked the color of that I thought had an interesting texture to it. It had those grooves in it like the inside of cardboard. And it was a nice color. It's like a rich burgundy shade. And I used the exact same technique. And since this was paper, I didn't use my miter cutter. I just used a really sharp pair of scissors to cut it from the dot to the corner. Now, dolls, I'm just allowing this to play again so you can see how I'm marking the two pieces of paper and cutting them from where I make the dot. Same thing on the other piece. Now, after I got all my miter pieces cut, I went on to assemble them on top of a really firm piece of cardstock to give the frames some stability. Because although the paper that I created the frame from was really pretty, it was kind of thin. So, this heavier cardstock will make it more sturdy. Now, after I assembled both frames, on the heavier cardstock. I cut them apart from the big piece of cardstock and allowed them to dry. Now, dolls, after I allowed them to dry, I started looking for options of how to fill them. And I had my favorite wallpaper that I had left over from my original dollhouse. I love these little roses. I did use these same little flowers on the boxes for the dress shop. And I just thought they would make a really cute set of pictures for the bedroom of the rooming house. After I got it centered really well inside the frame the way I wanted it, I trimmed off the excess and glued it to the body of the frame. Now, dolls, after I completed the frame, I didn't like it, that it looked kind of raw. So I finished it off by sealing the actual picture with a small scrap piece of leftover wallpaper. And I think that makes it look official. Now, although I really like the way the pictures look, but I really wasn't satisfied with the matte look of the frames. So I used a little bit of my craft glaze to give the little frames a little shine. Now, I did have a couple of my frames that I actually cast in the white clay. So in this frame, I'm just adding a little black and brown paint to give me a nice undertone before I start the aging process and adding my rub and buff to the frames. So dolls, I've really been working on organizing my supplies and materials and I keep coming across these little plastic bags. And I found some picture frames that I purchased from the Ann Arbor Miniature Show last year. Now these are definitely for photographs because they have the glass in them. So in general, I use my larger frames for art or paintings and the smaller ones with glass for photographs or family pictures. So now that I've decided that this picture will go in this frame, I will set it aside because I do want to age that frame. And this oval one I think is absolutely perfect for this lovely picture of my uncle Eugene. 
And I found this random wedding photo in a magazine. I thought it would look good in one of the frames. Now dolls, when you're putting pictures in frames, this is definitely a time you'll need to play to see which pictures look best in which frames. Now, I wonder if anybody ever has problems when they open their rub and buff and they just get carried away. I always get carried away and then I want to put rub and buff on everything. The urge also happens when I use crackle. <laughs> I am adding a little bit of my alcohol and black paint solution to the interior around the rim of these mass produced frames because I want them to look a little bit older, a little bit vintage. I don't like stuff looking perfectly perfect and new. So I'm just trying to age them a little bit with the water and glue solution and the rub and buff. Now, after playing around with my frames and getting them all aged and allowing them to dry, I did find some teeny weeny pictures in an old dollhouse catalog in the picture section. So I cut them out and created a really small booklet with some watercolor paper and just glued them inside to create what looks like a photo album. Kind of tedious, but I think it'll be kind of cute. So here are all my images all together, the ones that I made from paper, the wood ones, and the ones from polymer clay. I think any one of these would work perfectly in the dress shop or in the rooming house. Now, dolls, if you've enjoyed this video today, definitely let me know in the comments. Also, like, share, and subscribe. And I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next episode of Little Gretchen's Workshop. Bye-bye now, dolls.